Hello and welcome to this Year 8 lesson on ordering numbers in standard form. Our do now task, copy and complete the table below. This is building on your prior knowledge from the previous lesson. Pause the video while you copy out the table and fill it in. OK, excellent. Here are your answers on the changing numbers from ordinary form to standard form and then from ordinary form into standard form. Check them carefully, especially with all the zeros, and well done indeed if you got them all correct. Pause the video so you can mark them accurately, please. OK, as with all our learning, we'll be building on our previous learning from about standard form. So here's Captain Hook, with the planets and their distances from the sun, all listed. Think, just think about for now, we will return to this later, how would you put them in order of the nearest first, from the nearest to the sun? Why does it say average distance? Have a think about it for a few moments, and then we'll go on to our new learning. OK, so our bronze learning is to know how to order numbers with positive powers of 10. Silver learning to know how to order numbers with a negative powers of 10. And then gold is to be able to give full explanations to ordering numbers in real life. And you can see some examples on the right hand side, which is bigger for silver and gold, uh, silver and bronze. And then a real life example can, looking at the diameter of Venus and Earth for gold. So moving forward. Right. If we knew the number 5 times 10 to the power of 4, is it the 5 or the 4 that shows us the real size of the number? Well, the 5 shows us the starting digit of the number, and the 4 shows us how many more digits there are before the de any decimal point. Now, in this case, so 5 times 10 to the power of 4 is 5 followed by 4 more digits, which in this case are zeros. So 5 times 10 to the power of 4, we all know, is 50,000. OK, so which bit of number do you look at first when comparing numbers in standard form and why? Write down your answer before we move on. We look at the power first, as that will tell us whether it's a large or small number, and then look at the number at the front to determine its correct place value. So. Here, Tommy says 3 times 10 to the power of 4 is less than 4 times 10 to the power of 3. Write this sentence in your book and then come up with your answer before you move on to the next slide. Well, Tommy is wrong and possibly the easiest way is to change them into ordinary form and then compare them. So 3 times 10 to the power of 4 is 3 times 10,000 or 30,000. 4 times 10 to the power of 3 is 4 times 1,000, which is 4,000. We know that 4,000 is less than 30,000, so therefore 3 times 10 to the power of 4 is bigger than 4 times 10 to the power of 3, which means Tommy is wrong. Just a little reminder, don't forget to put that you know, therefore, that Tommy's wrong. OK? Next question, true or false? So a statement will come up. Write it down and then decide whether it's true or false, and then click to find out if you were correct. <clears throat> so, are you ready? Here's your first statement. Write it down. Decide whether you think it's true or false, and then click for the final answer. It's true. If we convert them to ordinary numbers, we've got 60,000. 7,000. Even though the 6 is not bigger than the 7, it's that power of 4 that goes with the 10 that makes the number bigger. Okay, so we look at the power first. Next one. True or false? 4 times 10 to the power of 4 is less than 9 times 10 to the power of 3. False, because the first number is 40,000 and the second one is 9,000. Ready for one more? True or false? Write it down and decide on your answer before 
and how you might explain your answer before clicking for my explanation. And this is true because 0 0.06 is bigger than 0 0.008. Ready for another one? Pause the video while you write it down and decide. This one is true. First number is 0 0.061 and that is less than 0 0.603. Are you ready for another one? True or false? False. Not, the first number is 0 0.000000069 and the second number is 300. Look at the powers. 10 to the minus 7 cannot be greater than 10 to the power of 2. So that has to be false. Look at the powers first and then use the base numbers, the numbers at the front, the multipliers to decide which is bigger. Ready for another one? Here we go. <coughs> Pause while you write, down, write it down and write your answer. True or false? It's actually false. They're both equal to 0 0.06. And of course, the second one, I'm sure you would have spotted it, is not written correctly in standard form anyway. OK, so again, as previously, here's question one on your purposeful practice. If you've printed off the worksheets, obviously write on there. If you haven't, then you'll need to write these down in your book. Put today's date, and if you haven't done so already, and the title. Pause the video while you work through it. Here's your answers to question one. Just check carefully, I'm sure hopefully you'll be fine with these. Mark them carefully, pause the video while you do. OK, here's question two. Do you agree with Dora? Write your answer in or write it out in your book and then complete the statements on the right hand side. Here are your answers to question two. Three hundredths, hundredths are greater than thousandths is a good answer for the number two A. And then you've got, hopefully, check your answers to A, B, C and D. OK, so which symbol fits in between these numbers? So there's a space there. How are we going to decide? Well, one of the ways is to write them both in ordinary form. So we've got 0 0.026 and 0 0.03. We know that 0 0.03 is bigger than 0 0.0026, so therefore 2.6 times 10 to the power of minus 3 must be less than 3 times 10 to the power of minus 2. OK, so here's question 3 and 4 for you to do. Write them down if you haven't got the work, if haven't printed the worksheet off. Pause the video while you do that. Here's question 5. Pause the video while you do this. Again, you may need to write them in your book. Here are your answers for question three, four, and five. Notice that in question five it says tick any numbers and it doesn't necessarily mean there's just one. Pause the video while you mark your work. OK, so here on our next slide we have some further examples. Put the numbers on each card in order, from smallest to largest. You might need to write them out as they are, and then put them in order. And then think about which card is easier to write in, size order, A, B or C, and try and give an explanation as to why. Pause the video while you do this. OK, so here are the answers. Check carefully with my answers with yours. 
And then part the second part of the question, which card is easy to write in size order A, B or C? I don't really think there's a right answer as long as you've given a reason. I might have put B because there were no powers of 10 at all. Or I might have put question A because they've all got 10 to the power of 7. As long as you've got a reason with your answer, it's probably fine. When you're ready, move on. OK, you might need to write these in your book. Pause the video while you do this. And here are the answers. Let's see how we go. So the first one, we've got 10 to the power of 6 and 10 to the power of 5. So the first one is greater than. Can't remember whether we're going down or across here, so we'll have to wait and see. We're going down, so first one is 9 times 10 to the power of 3, so it's a positive power, and then we've got a negative power, so the left-hand side must be bigger. The fourth one, I think the first one's 7.1 times, sorry, the third one, 7.1 times 10 to the power of 4, so therefore that must be a less than. Across the top of the next page, Oh, 1 times naught on the right-hand side. 1 times naught is naught. And 10 to the power of naught, I remember, is 1. So we've got 1 and naught, so 1 is greater than naught. The next one, I don't know what you put for this, obviously, but hopefully you went for equal, because that's 0.4 correctly stated in standard, standard form as 4 times 10 to the power of minus 1. And the last one, I used a calculator to do 1 divided by 4,100 and got something like 0 0.00027 something or other. So, and the other one is 0 0.00041, which is bigger. Okay. <coughs> there's, excuse me, there's a, an explanation, a little bit one for the last one. Okay. Okay, moving forward. Here's your purposeful practice. Pause the video. Write them in ascending order like we've just been doing. So there's question six. Pause the video while you do that. Again, pause the video while you do number seven. This is getting into real life examples, a bit like the hook at the start of the lesson. Here's your answers to question six. Do check carefully that you've got them in the right order. Pause the video while you do that. And here are your answers to question seven, written in the right order. For the planets, starting with the lightest. So Mercury is the lightest planet. Still pretty heavy, isn't it? 3.3 .3 times 10 to the power of 23 kilograms. I wonder how they actually measured it. Certainly didn't have a big pair of weighing scales big enough to do that. Anyway, that might be something you might want to look into. Okay, so try this question now. Write your answer in your exercise book. Arrange these cards in ascending order. Pause the video while you have a go at this. It's quite a tricky question, I would say. Okay, so I worked through them all carefully, working out what they were. 1 divided by 7,200, I used my calculator. Then I put some of the others into standard form, as you can see. And then finally, once I checked each one, I put them in order. Notice when they put them in order, I go back and put the actual cards down, not the, the decimals that they come up with. Okay, check your answers carefully. If you've got those right, particularly well done, because that was a challenging question. Okay, so referring back to Captain Hook and the distances from the sun, copy the table and answer in your exercise book. We are working out nearest to the sun first. Think about what you've learned during this lesson. And then think about why does it say average distance from the sun in miles. Pause the video while you copy the table and then try and put them in order. Okay, so here are your answers. In order with nearest first. Mercury is the nearest. Neptune is the furthest. Quite a long way. I think it would take a while, quite a while to walk there, if we could walk in space, that is. Why do they say average 
from the distance from the sun, says average, because the planets keep moving around, so therefore it's not always going to be the same. Check your answers when you've done when you've checked them, move to the next slide. Okay, so we've got some is this correct? Here's look at the table of planets that we've just been using. This time it's the diameter, not the distance from the sun. Look at the statement and decide if it's correct, yes or no. The diameter of Jupiter is smaller than the diameter of Uranus. I'll give you five seconds and then I'll put the answer on. That's false. That's 14, 100, sorry, 140,000 kilometres for Jupiter and Saturn is 51,000. Not Saturn, Uranus, sorry, it's 51,000. Apologies. Next question, is this correct? The diameter of Mars is smaller than the diameter of Venus. That's true. Mars is 6,800 kilometres. I just looked at the power of 10 first. Whereas the diameter of Venus is 12,000. So therefore, yes, it's true. Is this correct? Yes, it is. Next one. The diameter of Saturn is bigger than the diameter of Neptune. Yes, it's true. It's correct because you've got 120,000 kilometres for Saturn and Neptune is 50,000 kilometres. Even though there's a five there, look at the power of 10 first. That's part of the learning of this lesson. OK, so who would use this? Lots of scientists use standard form every day in their lives when dealing with very large numbers or very small ones. For example, red blood cells are 0.000008 metres big. But scientists will change that to 8 times 10 to the minus 6 metres in their calculations. There are over 300,000 million stars in the Andromeda galaxy. Scientists will use 3 times 10 to the power of 11 in their calculations. OK, so let's uh, review our learning. So which is bigger? There's some qu bronze learning. Answer the question on the right hand side. Silver learning, answer the question on our right hand side. And then gold learning, be able to give full explanations to ordering numbers in real life. Comment about the diameter of Venus and the Earth. I'll give Pi pause the video so you can answer those and then hopefully the answers will appear. There you go. There's your answers. Check them with your what you wrote down. And then you can review and say, yes, I've achieved my bronze learning or my silver learning or my gold learning and hopefully all three. OK, that's almost completes the lesson. Well done on today's learning. There'll be another one coming along soon. But don't forget to do the work set on Hegarty Maths to secure your learning. But well done.